It's okay. You're fine. You're fine. Shh. Stop struggling. Come on, get in here. Don't freak out. You're okay. You're fine now. I'm not trying to hurt you. In fact, I am delighted to see you unharmed. Stop it. Stop screaming or I'll be forced to keep holding your mouth shut. Don't you realize how dangerous it is to be so loud right now? You're so lucky to even be alive. This gathering was such a bad idea. I mean, who would have thought? Sending a small, helpless group of humans right into the heart of vampire territory? Brilliant. Nothing can go wrong. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to make it out to be your fault or blame it on your human companions. In fact, I admire the efforts you went through to set up negotiations. Even after. <clears throat> Please excuse my manners. You probably don't have the slightest idea who I am. No wonder I frighten you. A dark figure jumping out at you from the shadows, dragging you into a room. And a vampire at that. I apologize for my behavior. Especially after the horrors you must have experienced today. However, I couldn't risk you running away. Your steps would have certainly attracted even more attention. I sincerely hope you can forgive me. I am Maeve. A first name basis would be fitting, I assume. I hope you're not offended. After all, I have noticed we both take on quite similar roles in our respective organizations. You're the assistant, am I correct? I saw you writing the protocol. I am mostly in charge of handling correspondence, writing drafts and the like. Most of the letters you received from us were written by me, in fact. But please don't misunderstand me. None of the details were my doing. In fact, I heavily supported the idea of meeting at a human location. I should have been more insistent. If I hadn't given in, I might have avoided this... this bloodbath. Couldn't convince the council to change their mind. But it seems to me that you have much the same story to tell. After all, don't you willingly set foot in this castle? You may not be able to so easily guess my age, but we're both quite young. Compared to the others of our kind, of course. I am already much older than you'll likely ever be. Still can sense that neither of us are being taken seriously by our peers. Your expression at the outrageous demands your people confronted us with was a telltale sign. I really don't know what those humans were thinking. There's been war between us for as long as even most vampires can remember. My elders don't believe in peace anymore and don't easily give in to others' wishes. Perhaps it would have been better to go slow and steady, rather than ask for half of our territory. After all, tonight was supposed to result in a peace treaty, was it not? A step towards a better life for all of us. Even though you're human, I know you must have sensed it too. The tense energy in the air, the change in the atmosphere. Each new demand made my elders more and more angry stirred up a bitterness that's been growing for centuries. But your true downfall was your humanity. How quickly your hearts were beating, the blood rushing through your veins. The high stakes must have weighed heavily on your peers. I could smell the adrenaline from across the room. It must have been difficult even for the oldest of vampires to control themselves. To not leap across the table, ripping apart whoever their hands reach first. Apologies. Perhaps I shouldn't be describing this in such detail. You must be terrified. I remember when I first saw someone die by the hands of a vampire. It shook me to my core. I was human at the time. 
still many years away from being turned. I still recall every detail of that day, the events leading up to it, my father's fading scream, as the last drop of his blood was drained by the vampire who was towering over him. I was helpless, hiding behind some small bushes, unable to move or fight back. Fear overcame me, grief for my father's life. But most distinctly, I remember the nausea I felt at the gruesome sight before me. No child should have to see their loved ones die in such a horrific way. And no one should be forced to harm others just to ensure their own survival. Yet here I am. I've become what I've despised ever since that day. In truth, I don't think I ever became used to my current way of life. Even now, the scent of blood makes me ravenous. Yet my stomach still turns at the sight of a body. It never becomes any easier. It's near impossible to forget such a sight. Even after all these years, the memories have barely faded. Take your time to process tonight's tragedy, but please don't burden yourself with the guilt of your companion's deaths. It is not your fault, nor should you treat it as such. When your leader broke his glass, it must have nicked his skin. The smell of blood out in the open air, it was simply too much to handle. Knowing the older vampires, they likely didn't even attempt to hold back. They've fully accepted what they've become. And they couldn't care less about another life taken. The... The monster within them. They've stopped trying to fight it. I don't want to be like them, but it's becoming harder to resist as time goes on. I feared the day this curse finally consumes the last spark of humanity within me. I'm trying my hardest to prevent it. The one thing that came to my mind when I smelled that first drop of blood. Today cannot be the day I give up on who I was. I fled outside towards the gardens to put some distance between myself and the scent. Desperately trying not to fall into a blind rage. Had I stayed for just a few seconds longer, I would have given in to the bloodlust. But the whole time, all I could think about was you. How I had to leave behind the only human who actually seemed to carry some hope within them. Despite your obvious reservations about entering a vampire's abode, I could tell you were serious about this treaty. While most humans see us as mere creatures, and not without reason, you at least tried to treat us as equals. You even smiled when you greeted us. Surely you feel very different about my kind now. After the massacre, you nearly fell victim to. Regardless, seem like a beacon of hope to me, like a symbol of peace, a white dove, if you will. But to simply abandon my newfound hope, to leave you to certain doom, under any other circumstance it must seem cruel, heartless even, but you must understand, I am so young. I barely have the strength to take on even one other vampire. I couldn't have possibly saved you from my elders. So, I tried to at least keep you safe from one vampire. Even if it was just me. I... I went back to the big hall after things had calmed down a bit. I figured... Maybe it wasn't too late to have you seen by a doctor, no matter how small the chance. But 
despite the mess that had become of the hall, I could tell that you weren't among the victims. No one else seemed to have noticed, though. The scent of stale blood covered up your own quite nicely. I had some trouble locating you within the castle. I have no idea by what miracle you're standing before me now. Unwounded, at least physically. But I'm glad to have found you before anyone else did. I plan on bringing you to safety, to help you travel back towards a human city. I can tell you're having doubts about my intentions. I don't blame you. I know better than anyone what horrific acts my kind is capable of. Even now, as far away as I am from the blood that's been spilled, I have to fight against my cravings. It's become increasingly harder for me to hold back. I'm sure you can see the hint of red in my eyes. You seem a bit frightened. Believe me, Dove, I haven't yet forgotten what it's like to be human, and I do not wish to harm you. I know all too well what it's like to stand there before a vampire, unable to defend myself from whatever harm is coming my way. The last thing on my mind right now is to hand on the curse that has been forced upon me so many years ago. However, I'm beginning to doubt how much of a choice I'm being left in this matter. I barely avoided giving in earlier today. I'm afraid my efforts have consumed most of my willpower. No, Dove. Stay away from the door. You need to stay here, with me. If anyone else were to find you in the hallway, they certainly wouldn't treat you gently. I am your best chance of survival. You're trapped in here with me, and I am deeply sorry, but if you go out there, you will die an unavoidable, painful death. They'll rip you to shreds as soon as they sense your presence. Trust me, once a vampire has fallen into a severe state of bloodlust, it is hard to return to one's regular civil self. I'm afraid I'm the lesser of two evils, Dove. But I don't think I can resist much longer. You smell so good. My Dove. I can tell you're scared. I can hear your heart beating so fast. I can smell the adrenaline, the fear on you. I can sense the blood pulsing through your veins. It's not making this any easier for me. In fact, quite the opposite. I can't fight it for much longer. Your mere presence is making me lose my mind, Dove. The fear in your eyes. The way you're shaking. It only increases the temptation. I... I shouldn't give in, but... You're just... Too enticing. Please forgive me. I'll be as gentle as I possibly can. I am terribly sorry. You taste so good. I, I don't know if I can stop in time. By the Lord, I bet none of the other humans taste as exquisite as you do. You're so much younger, so full of vitality. I need more. So 
damn good. I might regret this. No, I will regret this. But it just it feels too good to hell with my morals. I I need this. I deserve this.